Hey guys, welcome to the Fastlane Car. My name is Tommy and I'm here in one special vehicle. This is the brand new Hyundai Nexo. This is a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle and with me are the gentlemen behind this vehicle. So can you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Kevin Lee from Hyundai. I'm in charge of the fuel cell development on U.S. Um, research and development in Hyundai R&D Center. Okay, and? And I'm uh, Jerome Grajois. I'm a senior manager on engineering and uh, I work in, uh, in Chino, California. This is where we have our lab that kind of works on fuel cell and other uh, technologies like hybrids and battery EV. Perfect, so this is a new vehicle to me. I've, I've never driven an XO and I'm very excited. Um, talk me through kind of how we start the vehicle and how that all works. So starting the vehicle is just similar to the other um, conventional vehicle. Okay. So you hit the brakes yep. and then you turn the power. Right. And then when you see the ready light, and for this case, it's a green um, ready to go vehicle. Right. And then it's ready to go. So in terms of what it's going to drive like, is it going to drive like a full BEV vehicle? Is it going to be a little bit different? Tell it'll me about be, the experience. It'll be very similar to the BEV vehicle because um, the fuel cell vehicle also is driven mainly by the motor right. or only the motor itself. So you'll get the instant torque when yep. you hit it. But um, there will be a slight delay compared to EV because um, we have to take in the air from the outside. So until the fuel cell becomes fully saturized, um, saturated, uh, you'll see the little delay. But overall, experience-wise, it will be completely like an EV vehicle. So Kevin, what's under the hood of the Nexo here? So I can't explain the overall engine room bay here. Yep. Um, so our fuel cell stack is actually mounted on this bottom here. This um, rectangular gray module is our fuel cell stack, okay. which can go up to 400 volts. And then it creates a DC current and we need to make it into the AC. So on the top of it is our high voltage inverter junction box. This will convert the DC current to the AC current and distribute it throughout the whole, whole vehicle. Um, here is an air filter, just like the conventional vehicle. Okay. I can open it, but it would look, it would look like just like an air Standard conventional. Air um, so this is where we take the inlet air. And you can't see it from the bottom, but we have an air uh, turbo compressor that supplies the air in there. But we have to take the vehicle on the lift to be able to see that. So here, this module is actually um, our inverter for the um, our air compressor. So uh, our, our air compressor uses a three-phase high voltage system. So we have to convert the DC power to the AC power. So this is the what it does to do that. Um, this also supplies the power to the our uh, cooling pump as well. So we call this a blower pump control unit. Yep. And then we have a two different cooling system for Nexo. Um, so we have a green coolant um, just for our uh, conventional uh, power electronics. So what we're using all the vehicles. And then we have to use a special blue coolant for uh, fuel cell vehicles. The reason for that is um, for a fuel cell, uh, it, it creates a lot of current electricity. So we have to keep it a very low conductivity. And then in the front, you still have a standard radiator? Yeah, standard like radiator. Yeah. Um, we have a, a high radiator fan. So fuel cell requires a lot of cooling because um, it generates a lot more heat than uh, conventional vehicles. So we have a high voltage radiator fan that cool. keeps us. Uh, so when we take the vehicle to Death Valley, it has no problems. So can you guys explain just a little bit about how the fuel cell technology works? Because it's a, it's a very new technology for a lot of you out there watching. Yes. There is no combustion in the vehicle. Okay. Everything is electrochemical reaction. So you take the hydrogen coming from the tank into the fuel cell and then you take the oxygen from the outside using our air compressor, hydrogen and oxygen react. And then from there in the electrochemical reaction, electron falls off from the hydrogen and then that generates a current which ultimately powers the fuel cell vehicle's motor. Gotcha. And then from the current flow, where electron meets the uh, oxygen, um, they combine the water and it comes as an emission as the water. So Kevin, this is our, uh, our little flap here. So in your standard place, like you'd find a gasoline car. Yes, uh, so this is the receptacle for fuel cell vehicle. So it's just like a gasoline vehicle, but except we have a receptacle protruding out. For the gasoline vehicle, you have to plug it in. Right. So it's a reverse. So it prevents the customer from trying to fill up a gasoline nozzle into the fuel cell vehicle. So it's the other way around. Um, here, if you can see the nozzle, this is uh, where we send our infrared uh, signal to the station. Okay. So when we feel, we want to feel it safe. So what it, this signal does is we send the, the uh, vehicle's tank's pressure and temperature to the station, saying uh, our pressure is okay, our temperature is okay, so we can keep filling. Wow. And then if something does happen, 
then uh, it'll send the abort signal and it'll stop the fueling. So talk to me a little bit about the tank. What have you had to go through to, to make sure it's secure and, and some of the, the testing there? So you went through all kinds of testing like conventional vehicle does. We do a drop test, uh, we shoot 10 millimeter caliber bullets. Um, we do a flame test. Um, we take it to the military uh, base to test them and they have passed all the safety center. And um, we do the crash test through the NISA and they also met the safety center also. So vehicles. If anything, it's more safe than <laughs> other conventional vehicles. So the tank is also made of the carbon fiber. Oh wow, okay. The plastic liner, so it's very, very strong. Hey, there is one tank. Oh my gosh, so yes. you can just pull out the little cargo tracks. Yes. yes. Unbelievable. And we have two more of the same size and stack between. Wow, so there's three tanks yeah, Three tank of the same sizes. Um, it holds uh, 6.3 kilograms of hydrogen. Yeah. And what, what does that mean in terms of range? What's the, the range? So with a 6.3, this vehicle has 380 miles with a one trim level. Uh, there's a, a high trim level that gets 350. Um, if you had, you know, this is an SUV, so if we had the same power plant on a sedan, you could go probably over 400 miles. Wow. So I think the important thing here is there's still a battery on board this vehicle. Yes. Do you know the capacity of that pack? Uh, so it's very small, similar to our conventional hybrid vehicle. So it's capacity of 1.56 kilowatt hour. Oh, that is really small. Yeah, with the peak power of 40 kilowatt. So it's assisting battery, uh, not for the main like uh, traction power support, but to assist when uh, when you need uh, access say power needed, but when you want to drive a pure EV mode at the low speed, then that's where we utilize the battery. I gotcha. So uh, pulling onto this oval track, it feels just like any other battery electric vehicle. Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so you know, as Kevin mentioned, it's basically an electric vehicle. The core difference with the BEV is on a BEV, you charge the electricity in the battery and you use it as depleted. Where here, you're making the electricity on demand, depending on how much you press the throttle. Gotcha. So, and that battery that we have, that small battery, similar to a hybrid, helps you if you want to regen energy while braking, uh, or during an acceleration, it kind of helps the, the stack uh, boosting the electric speed of the motor. So as we pull out kind of to faster speeds here, it's super smooth. I yes. mean, there, you yeah, really, yes. and there's not much of a delay, maybe like a little bit compared to uh, an EV, you're right, yes. but. So what's the top speed of this vehicle? So the claim is uh, 111 miles per hour. Okay. That's the specification for the maximum for vehicle. But depending on the windy, wind and road condition, you'll probably hit around like 106 miles per hour. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. I mean, a lot of the first gen uh, BEVs were limited to 85, 86. Yes. Yeah, so we brought uh, recently this vehicle, not that one specific unit, but uh, a similar vehicle to the uh, Bonneville uh, Salt Flats in Utah. Okay. And the vehicle, they established the land speed record for fuel cell at 106 miles per hour. That's fast. And, yeah, we just did that in September, so you can find some information so, on that vehicle. That's 102 there, and it feels very normal. I imagine we're, we're, uh, we're burning quite a lot of hydrogen right about now. You'll see uh, water scurrying from the exhaust pipe at this moment. Would you really? Yes. 105? Yes. That is really incredible. Yes. Yeah, 106, you're right. Yeah. That, that's it. Wow. Okay, let's slow it down here a little. So tell me about some of the benefits of a hydrogen vehicle over a full battery electric. So there's uh, two different uh, uh, difference. Uh, one is a hydrogen vehicle has an extended range compared to the average uh, EV vehicle. So this vehicle can travel up to 380 miles, right. uh, depending on the trim level. And then we have a benefit of quick charging. So uh, current hydrogen station can fill up this car within uh, five minutes right. uh, compared to the conventional battery electric vehicle, which takes uh, a couple of hours. Uh, well, there's a downside to it because uh, Unlike electric vehicle, okay, which uh, we can plug it from the home, um, fuel cell vehicle does need the hydrogen stations to get to. Um, hydrogen station is very similar to a conventional uh, gasoline dispenser. So you just you know, punch in the credit card, type your zip code, and then put the nozzle, and you just wait for the vehicles to finish. So the only byproduct out of this vehicle is yes. going to be clean water. Yes. Um, how much water will this produce? Just regular driving on a daily basis. Uh, you know that number? So I, I have that, the ballpark is like on a tank. Yeah. You're probably going to generate about 100 pounds of water. That's uh, a lot of so, water. Yeah, so with the, the, the tank will hold about six kilograms of hydrogen. Uh, and then the, so if you make your chemical balance, you'll, you'll find out that if you drive your 350 miles or 380 miles, it's about 100 pounds. Wow. That's a big, that's it's, a big it's, amount it's, of water. It's a small amount, yes. So what I will say right off the bat is I just had the opportunity to drive the e Toyota Mirai and this is a lot more normal. So that kind of feels like a, 
uh, like a Prius on steroids. This feels like a normal crossover, uh, and I think that is by far a good thing. And the other cool thing is, in this vehicle when you floor it, there's not as much noise. So in the Toyota, there's kind of like a big delay, yes. and there's like a whooshing noise. Yes. This is a lot quieter and a lot more kind of immediate. It's really interesting. So there you have it guys, 106 miles an hour is the fastest I got the Nexo to go here at the Hyundai Proving Grounds in California. And let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of this hydrogen tech? Is it the future or is it just a little bit too far-fetched? As always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in hydrogen fuel cell reviews.